Hey everybody, this is a video and <laughs> it's funny thing is the irony because Twitter was in the news today. This is why I'm here because uh, I've been mocked, excoriated, told I don't understand math and everything else because of some recent events and that I can't do calculations. I can't calculate inflation. So again, just to reiterate, we are here to discuss some of the stuff that happened on a video last Friday in Crypto Banter and some of the things I heard today uh, on Digital Asset News and others. And let's just call this video Inflation Truth and let's dig into it again and why it's important. And I need to defend my position, but let's just not waste any more time. So Crypto Uncovered, our new series, it's about inflation. Math, Money and Freedom is a channel. We do our math. We take it very seriously. And disclaimer, it doesn't matter. So today's story, let's jump in. Uh, apparently, in a high inflationary environment, it is perhaps very valuable to have a counter-inflationary narrative. My quote from today, and since day one of entering the crypto space, I've kept a very open mind about all projects, big and small. What has and always will shape my opinion on a project is data. I'm a data-driven guy. It's all quant. It's all numbers. It is a key factor in driving investment outlook and decisions. And you simply can't argue with data-driven facts. That's why it's such a safe place to come from. And yet, that's exactly what I see happening. So once again, here is the data to back up my original statement on April 14th, 2022. We just covered and everything I've said since the beginning of time on this channel. So first of all, how all this began? This began with a Mashinsky tweet to me about inflation of tokens. I've covered this before, but again, this was back in early January. And Emin Gunsirer, the head of Avalanche, replied, this is so incredibly wrong. And obviously, he has a lot of background, a lot of experience. He's a professor at Cornell University, computer science over 20 years, specializing in distributed networks. Maybe we had something wrong, but let's dig a little bit deeper. So then uh, we went back and forth, and he was adamant, and I actually believed him. And I said, perhaps myself... My math and Masari, we messed up our calculations. Who knows? Um, and it prompted me to dig more. So I, if I ever make a mistake, I've got to find out why and learn from it. Um, now, in the chain back and forth, I was very polite. I invited him on the channel to discuss, as well as asked him for a more detailed tokenomics report. After the old one disappeared from the website, it was taken down. I never heard anything back. But he did say couple of things in that tweet record here is there is a blatant error and in inflation is single digits around three to four percent and i'm like whoa i'm calculating 55 percent how can it be three or four percent how could i be so wrong anyway then crypto banter last friday crypto banter ran did a great job interviewing big thank you again ran i received so many tweets about my avalanche stance about inflation being wrong. Again, I've been excoriated on the interweb and Twitter. So my response to tweet, and I don't like to respond to this type of stuff, but when it goes after the Invest Answers channel brand, we are all about integrity and math. And when people deride us, I have no choice but to defend our position and show the data. This is why I'm here. So again, I'll be very polite. I'll just lay out Everything we see in an honest, full integrity, data-driven way. Bitcoin is a hard-capped asset. Rebuttal number one to that comment you just heard is Avalanche, like Bitcoin, is a hard-capped asset. I mean, okay, true, but hard cap is obscured on some sites. So you've got the circulating uh, supply, 268 million, 249,240. That's went from coin market cap and Masari. You got a max supply of 720 million. That's from Masari, Coin360, and the white paper. And then you've got a total supply from Coin Market Cap of 395,891,290. These are a little bit obscured, obfuscated. I'm not sure exactly what, is, what you want to call it, but just numbers. Minting rate, which is the thing that we care about. Rebuttal number two the minting rate, Amin said, which is the thing we care about. Hmm. This is strange. Um, Amin does not want you to look perhaps at the unlock schedule. He only wants you to focus on the minting rate. He said himself at 1806 into the video with Iran. There's a link below, by the way. But we do care about the unlock schedule very much because it does contribute to your token dilution. And as token holders, we care about this in a big way. So here you see semantics of whether inflation should only count the minting rate or unlock schedule. 
What we want to know is how much investors are getting diluted, no matter where the new supply comes from. And if you look at current inflation of Masari Pro, which we subscribe to, and it's a great system, liquid supply and dividing by the liquid supply today gives a good estimate of dilution that an investor may suffer. This is why we look at this. It's absolutely critical in anything, equities, tokens, you name it. They ended up conflating two things. So, AVAX rebuttal number three. Amin said, in the Masari numbers, they conflate the two. And Amin says, Masari is conflating the two numbers, yet Masari's calculation is very cut and dry. It says it's a measure of dilution to investors, and this includes vesting, etc. If you look at the definition from Masari, significant supply shocks, halvings, vesting, expiry, etc. are critical to calculate current inflation. But we go a lot further. Okay, and then, I mean, one of the criticisms, we had a show here on Friday, and one of the criticisms against Avalanche was that the token, the, the token, the token nomics are very inflationary. You've just mentioned that they are capped, which we, we, we know, but is there, is there some concern around very inflationary tokenomics? Why are people... No, stop, stop, please stop. I want to put an end to this. AVAX rebuttal number four. Amin says, stop, 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 please stop. I want to put an end to this. Well, if you don't like the heat, get out of the kitchen, as Harry Truman once said, but it did sound a little overly defensive, like someone is engaging in an emotionally defensive maneuvers to try and, I don't know, get that unwanted feeling of, or admit responsibility for something, for some act. I'm not sure. There is a very, very complicated uh, set of graphs that Messari puts out. Number five, this one. There is a very complicated set of graphs that Masari put out. And in those graphs, they screwed up. No, Masari does not put out a complicated set of graphs. So I'm not sure what that's about. They ended up conflating two things. One is the inflationary nature of the M1 money supply. The other one is the unlock schedule. They conflated two things. One is the inflationary nature of the M1 supply, and the other one is the unlock schedule. Those are not the same thing. And we say, how does token inflation relate to the monetary inflation? Again, confused, but maybe that's the idea. Minting rate, which is the thing that we care about. Rebuttal number six. The minting rate is the thing that we care about. Hmm. Can we get to the back to the real topic, token inflation? It's not solely about minting. We mentioned that already. So the minting rate for Bitcoin is whatever it is. And uh, so, so there's that. Rebuttal number seven. The minting rate for Bitcoin is whatever it is. So there is that. Second request to get back to the topic and is about token inflation. I don't know if it's trying to kick us off the scent. I'm not sure. And then there's the rate at which people take their coins out of deep storage. And that's a different thing. And in the Masari numbers, they conflated the two. AVAX rebuttal number eight. Then there is the rate that people take their coins out of deep storage. And in the Masari numbers, they conflated the two. Okay, this is the third request to get back to the subject in the hand. Token inflation. At this point, we have no idea what he's talking about. Conflation, Masari, minting, Bitcoin, avalanche, deep storage. I don't know at this stage. And they're claiming something like 26% in the first year or whatever. It's all false. AVAX rebuttal number nine. Masari said 26% in the first year. It is all false. Yes, it is false. The first year is at least 55%. By my calculations, a lot higher than that. So yes, it's not 26%. And we'll talk more about that and show some calculations subsequently that are math driven. Our minting rate is 9.5%. 60% of that stuff goes directly into staking. Number 10, our minting rate is 9.5%. 60% goes directly into staking. Well, if you look carefully at the slide, what Eamon is referring to on AVAX scan, it does show staking rewards to be at about 9.43%. We've covered rewards and incentives that drive action. And that is about a 67% staking ratio. But according to staking rewards, they have an immediate effective reward of about 2.8% to stakers when accounting for network inflation. And that's not even accounting for the dilution from vesting. Very, very important to think about. 
Uh, our M1 growth rate is about 5.7 to about 6%. And so that, I think, is a very, very good number, especially given that the inflation just came in at 8.5. AVAX rebuttal number 11. Our M1 growth rate is about 5.7 to 6%, and that is a good number, especially considering inflation is 8.5%. So here we are saying weird things. It's a good tactic to throw listeners off. I'll give them that. But remember, M1 is a measure of money supply that includes currency, demand deposits, and other liquid deposits, including savings deposits. M1 does not include financial assets such as bonds. It is a monetary item, not a tokenary item. Some people may argue with that, but anyway. We're a deflationary coin by every, every metric. Hey, Vaxxer bottle number 12. We are a deflationary coin by every metric. No, that is not True. The last 12 months, at least 55%. The last 12 weeks, 9.9% inflation. That's 40% annualized. That is the truth. Okay. Now let's prove some of these numbers real quick. First of all, Masari report. Yes. Amen thinks this is patently false, but it's not. It's numbers. I calculated the exact same ones myself and I'll show you in a minute. The Avalanche web page used in our research change some things around anyway. But look at this. If you look at even just Q1 2022, the inflation rate is 9.9%. Q4 2021, 10.4%. This is inflation. This is the growth in the number of tokens in a 12-week period. Q2 2021, 27.8%. Q2 2021, 34.8%. Add all those up, it's a lot. A lot of inflation. But let's dig a little bit deeper. Here we look at the Avalanche supply stats, July 12th. 2021, there was 172,418,000 supply. Okay, as we noted uh, in key items here, these are screenshots we had from our previous analysis. We keep all the screenshots. These are the receipts. Second, if you look at one year later, 319, 2021 compared to 319, 2022, you can see the supply went from 127 million to 266.9 million. That is a very large increase in supply. You guys can calculate what that is but is way more than 55%. Now, if you look at just this, this is 26 days from my previous review. 319, 2022, the avalanche supply was 266,901,179 tokens. Today, it's 268,289,240 tokens. That is 1.4 million tokens were issued over the last 26 days. The buying pressure to absorb that many tokens is about $125 million in 26 days. That is That drives a lot of price suppression. That's why we look at this, because we're interested in price action. So next thing, the Avalanche um, vesting schedule, when we did our analysis, uh, the initial one last year, we pulled this from the website as well as white papers, etc. This website is no longer available. It was taken down and it shows you the vesting schedule for all the different people, the foundation, the team, especially the foundation and team, very important because you can see how much they're growing. And this is over a four year period up until September 2024. And there's another 144 million to go. But that is not all. If you look carefully to the left in the very fine print, you will see here it says percent unlocked as a percent of 360 million tokens. Remember, the total supply is not 360 million, it's 720 million. So there's a long way to go. Let's look at what that looks like. So if you look at the avalanche inflation, one year max supply removal, again, some places it has no max supply, some places like the white paper, Masari, it has 720 million. Uh, Coin market cap has different numbers, but you can see the circling supply difference between 319 to 319, 2021, 2022 is 108.97%. Now, Let's think about the next 29 months up to the end of the four-year vesting schedule, which is critical. 144 million tokens will hit the market, okay? That is an average inflation of at least 23.5% after 109% inflation over the last 12 months by our calculations. And depending on where you measure the mean inflation, if it's over the last quarter to the next three quarters or the last two quarters of the next two quarters, you will see the rate will be at least 48% simple. Now, the next eight years is more of a concern. If you imagine there are 441.71 million tokens that could hit the market over the next eight years, they probably will. That is if you take 56.5 million divided by 268 million, 
that is an average 21% eight year inflation rate. Now per the chart that is uh, no longer hosted on the website, you can clearly see foundation and team unlocks ramping. So again, as a reminder, circulating today, 268 million, max supply 720, total supply 395, the supply hitting the market over the next eight years, 451.7 million. So I don't know how quickly, how fast they're gonna be released, but they are gonna hit the market over time. And remember, all these numbers are all open, publicly available information, but it's not just Avalanche that does this. There are many uh, tokens out there that play games. This one was covered by Rob at Digital Asset News this morning. Coincidentally, I listened to it, it got my attention because I knew what I was gonna be working on because I was called out on Twitter to do this. And it was Akala, which is a polka dot parachain. And it says on their website, inflation, 0%, supply profile, fixed and deflationary. Very interesting. How is that possible? And if you look at the fine print, it says ACA is utility token with a fixed supply of 1 billion. The entire supply will be minted at the Genesis block launch. That happened about three or four months ago. Let's look at the numbers one more time. The Ecala actual inflation is 123.7%, not zero. The circling supply is 37%. The max supply is a billion tokens. That is correct. But the inflation rate is 123.77% of stock to flow. And that is it replenishes itself every 0.8 of a year. Highly inflationary. So conclusion, everybody. We are here. We only care about numbers and quant. I mean, you're welcome to come on the channel. I've asked you many times before. Come on again, make an appearance and uh, we can hash this out. We respect you. But we need to get to the bottom of this. And myself, Masari, and Emin can't all be right. Somebody needs to be wrong. Okay? We don't want to hear semantics or funny words or anything like that. And publicly available data could be wrong. And if so, it needs to be corrected. So that's where we are, everybody. It's a tricky situation. But you can see, you got to be very, very careful on how you go through the data and the information that's out there. Anyway, thank you all for your time. I don't like doing this. But when our credentials are being questioned, we have to defend ourselves and we will, okay? We are not bought by anybody. We're not influenced by anybody. We've got no <laughs> dog in this fight, as they say. We just want to share information so you guys can all learn what to look for, okay? Thanks all. See you later.